Well, the Jackrabbit women always play a brutally tough non-conference schedule, and this year was as tough as ever. And our conversation with Coach Aaron Johnston starts with that, why he always puts his team through the ringer early on. Well, this year it was 16 games. We ended up playing one more game because we played an exempt tournament. Then we lost two games from the conference schedule late, so we had to fill two games. That happened to be Little Rock and Notre Dame. Um, so it just kind of worked out this year where we had a lot of things going against us. But on the same side, uh, we had some really unique opportunities. We had the chance to get Notre Dame to come back to Frost Arena in a couple years, and we're not going to pass that up. We were on the back end of a couple of deals with Penn State and Georgetown coming to our place. We picked up TCU and Stanford in a tournament. We don't really control who we play. We just sign up for the tournament. So, you know, some of the things just kind of happen that way. But I think our policy and tradition here has always been to play great teams. And uh, we had some amazing wins and, and also some really just poor losses, unfortunately. So it's really trying to figure out what works well and what doesn't work and moving forward from it. And that kind of competition will definitely show it to us. And we got some great experiences out of the deal, too. So it was definitely worth it. What were the good parts? And to talk a little bit about the wins over Penn State and Georgetown and Central Michigan, another very good team. What was good in those games? Yeah, you know, I think that sometimes the knock against us is we're not big enough, we're not quick enough, we're not something enough and when you play a Penn State and beat them you're enough you know you had to play collectively as a unit in that game to be really good and we had everybody on the floor clicking offensively making shots penetration was good our spacing was good and when you can pass the ball when you can put it on the floor and you can make shots you can spread out some of those teams that have a lot of size and athleticism we did that uh, I thought against Central Michigan we did that against Georgetown early and so that's a real positive we can build on that as we play more of those teams going forward the things we struggled with, which I'm sure is your next question, is uh, we just didn't handle post play very well. And if you look at Notre Dame, all American post player. Stanford, all American post player. BYU, 6'7, really good post player. Uh, Middle Tennessee, a potential all American type post player. Those teams all had something that, that we really had a hard time defending that made it tough for us. Georgetown had a good post player. She was a freshman, but you guys you handled that game well. They did, and we were lucky enough. She kind of stepped on the perimeter and faced the basket a lot. So that type of post we really excel against. Penn State for instance, didn't just jam it inside. They had their posts up on the perimeter a little bit more. So really, we've got to learn how to defend that area a little bit better. There's other issues that came up in those games, but that's a big area for us to improve. All right, you get into summer league play now. We, you won't see quite as much of that as a 6'4", a 6'5", six, six, very good post player. I don't think so. I hope not, unless somebody picked it up that we don't know about. I'd say Western Illinois has got a really good post player in Luke. She's put up some really good numbers, a lot of double-doubles. A lot of the other real good players in the league are perimeter players this year. And that's not taken away from the other post players, but Summit League has some phenomenal perimeter players. Hyde from Fort Wayne is really one of the better guards in the Midwest, and you can say that about some other players. Goss from IUPUI, so there's going to be some big challenges. IUPUI, for whatever reason, especially last year, was a tough matchup. Why? You know, I just think their quickness and athleticism on the defensive end. Neither of those games did we shoot the ball well. We really struggled. I went back and watched those films and just really had a hard time putting the ball in the basket. And I attribute that to some of their quickness and defensive effort. And uh, we just didn't get it done on the defensive end in those games either. I think both of them we shot under 35%. So had we made some shots, that's going to help us. But just wasn't, we weren't quite good enough defensively in those games either. And you talk about the games this year in these first 16 where you've struggled offensively. Is it just as simple as missing shots or what happens when you can't score in that first 20 minutes? Yeah, a couple of things I think. One, we turned over too much. Um, and I think the turnovers are a result of players trying to make a lot of plays that maybe they're not quite ready to make in that possession. They're good enough players, but they're trying to force it a little too early in a possession, trying to do a little bit too much on their own. So some turnovers, some poor shots. Um, and then you just kind of get down. And then and when you play really good teams, when you kind of give them an inch, they can kind of steamroll you. Yeah. And so uh, some of those games got a little bit too far of a spread, but some of it had to do with them playing well and us just not being very good. Well, like you said, you've got the players. If they kind of let it come to them, as you hear that a lot, just do what they can do. You've got the players to make those plays, especially oh, yeah. now when you get into the league season, right? I think so. I love our team. I think we're really good. We're as good as we have been. Our schedule, I think, was ranked 20th in the country for strength of schedule in those 16 games. I mean, that's pretty good. That's a big challenge. And uh, we came out on the right side of that schedule with some good wins. Uh, so our team is exactly what we need. We need to play better, though, and everyone needs to keep that in mind. Uh, the conference season isn't going to fix our issues. That's something we have to address internally as a team. The conference season doesn't get easier. We have to fix the things that we need to do, and, and that's what I'm looking forward to is playing better basketball, and hopefully it shows up as we get in the conference. Are you playing different offensively this year? Are you pushing tempo a little more? Are you playing different style of offense? You know, our style when we've been good has been more up-tempo. Uh, when we've struggled, it's been more of a slug-it-out, half-court type of game. 
And uh, I attribute that to two reasons. When we struggle, our defense isn't good, so we're always taking the ball to the net. We're not getting a lot of missed shots, turnovers that we can transition on. So our defense has got to be good to create some offense for us, but we're always going to be at our best when the tempo's a little bit faster, I think, a few more possessions. Um, but our defense has got to be good enough to get there. All right. Quick assessment on your freshmen, if you would. The true freshmen that are playing with Stevens and Kerry Young and Carissa Over. Just yeah, Carissa, Kerry, and China have been fantastic. I mean, they've all had big games for us. China got her first start against Notre Dame. Welcome to uh, <laughs> welcome to big-time basketball. But Carissa and Kerry have been good for us this year, too. All three of them have a really bright future. Just love them. Great competitors, great players. They're going to be fun to watch. All right, the two-time defending Summit League regular season champs get it going Thursday night, 7 o'clock. That game live on Midco Sports Network and on Fox College Sports. And then a 4 o'clock game on Saturday against Fort Wayne and the preseason player of the year, Amanda Hyde.